I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I have got some more battery test results for you. And actually, as you can see from this spreadsheet, spreadsheet, apologies to the sensors. As you can see from this spreadsheet, I have a whole lot of battery test results for you. These are results, new results that I'm releasing today for uh, the Xylo batteries from GetFPV. The Schizo Dark Matter, that was the famous battery that started Schizo's truck eight times and was calculated to 8,000 C, 2 million amps, and uh, yeah, we'll see about that. And the ACEHE, ACE, he? I don't know how to say that word. These are three new batteries that I'm releasing results for today. But I'm also putting these results from older batteries on the spreadsheet because people have asked, okay, isn't there some place I can just look at these results all in one place? And if you've noticed I haven't released results in a little while, it's because I've been working on this website where I want to let you guys use the website to search the results, to view the graphs. And it's just, it's not, I'm doing the spreadsheet because that I can do today and you can have the results. The website's dragging. And we'll start with the Schizo Dark Matter battery. This is the battery that Schizo used to start his trucks eight times. And people did the math based on how long it was cranking and how many amps the car was pulling. And they were really, really amazingly impressed with this battery. This battery has a 150C rating on its label, or I think it says 300 and something C burst. That set some very high expectations. I do want to remind you that this battery was purchased. I purchased two of these batteries at retail using somebody else's name. So nobody knew that these batteries were going to me. And how did the results come out? The capacity discharge was 98% of the rated capacity. So if we just, uh, let's just do this. Let's just take all of the 1300 milliamp hour packs in the test. We can see that the best one appears to be the Xylo but in terms of capacity percent, which discharged 1330. Schizo Dark Matter came in at a re perfectly respectable 1276 or 98% of its label rating. Nothing particularly remarkable about the capacity of this battery. Now in the C rating tests, we did something a little unusual. These lines right here are the standard C rate discharge that I do. We started at 50, 55, 57, 60 amps, trying to home in on where this battery fits. And the rule that I use is that the battery has to discharge at least 50% of its capacity. Uh, so here it discharged uh, a 946 milliamp hours. That's more than 50%. Here it discharged uh, 783. That's more than 50%. The bottom line is that at 50 amps, it succeeded. At 60 amps, it did not succeed. 575, 591, that is less than 50% of 1300. However, at 57 amps, it just barely did. Now, normally I don't go down to the, I use 10 amp gradations. So we would call this a 50 amp battery. However, just because people were curious and it was so close on 60 amps, I, I tested a little more and we can see that this one, if we were to go further, we would say it was a 57 amp battery, but using apples to apples comparison with all the other ones in the table, it is a 50 amp battery discharging 946 milliamp hours. And we can see that that is in fact near the top of the 50 amp packs. However, the race day quads 1300 is a 60 amp pack. So that's better. <laughs> that's a that's better. It discharged 729 milliamp hours at 60 amps. That's better than anything you did at 50 amps. If you were able to do 60 amps, you win. So then what are these lines down here? And the answer is that this battery was so controversial and so hyped up. I wanted to do a little more testing to see what its sort of absolute limit was. So normally I discharge the batteries down to 14 volts and that's where I stop my testing, which some people would say, well, if we discharge them lower than that in practice. Well, some people do. It's not great for the battery's health. And I want to make sure that I'm not damaging the batteries. If I do a 50 amp discharge down to 13.5 volts, then the 60 amp discharge might be hurt because the battery was over discharged. And so I stop at 14 volts, but I discharge this battery even lower. In fact, here I'm using, I believe it was 3.2 volts per cell. Now this was the last test that I ran. 
So that's so I wanted to make sure if I did damage the battery, it wouldn't affect any other tests. But what does the discharge look like when I go down to 3.2 volts per cell? And there is something interesting. This is not the first battery that I've done this to. You see this pattern. What you see is that there is a very steep drop. And then the battery kind of plateaus and holds on a little bit until then it finally sags off again. And this was an 88 amp discharge and this was yeah these were both 88 amp discharges for two batteries so what we see here is that at 88 amps the battery holds at 13.5 volts that's pretty good uh, but that's not unique to this battery uh, we see other batteries when they're allowed to go below 14 volts they do plateau and last longer and the key thing to take away is well number one we would see a similar gradation if we discharge to 13.5 versus 14 volts, the batteries that were good at 14 volts would still be good at 13.5. We would just stress them more during the course of the testing. But it also says that for people who are doing math on Facebook and saying that the battery must have been delivering 200 amps, 400, whatever, you can see here that at about 88, maybe 90 amps, the battery just levels out at 13.5 volts, right? And if you were to push it to 90 or 100 amps, it would level out even lower. But you're really into the range where you're definitely, I mean, you could argue if you were a racer that you were okay with this and your batteries wouldn't last as long as if you stopped at 14, but they would be usable. But I just can't see how you could argue you could push this battery much past this 88 amp discharge because it's going to really start dropping down into the range where it's going to damage itself. Therefore, where does that leave us about this schizo dark matter battery? It is a, a fine battery, but when you consider that it costs, I mean, there's nothing, it's not a bad battery, but when you consider it costs around $32 or $32 and you can get the race day quads, which performs better for about $20, then there's just no real question what you should do. And it should also prove that stunts when they when they did that video where they started schizo's truck a bunch of times they said this is just a stunt they were just fooling around here and everybody on the internet went oh my god this is the best battery i ever saw prove it joshua do your testing show us how good it is and it turns out it really was just a silly publicity stunt and it worked but the battery is turns out not that remarkable okay <laughs> moving on so then we've got the ACEHE packs, the 1300 and the 1500. And these guys, capacity, mm, the 1300 is a little low at only 95% of its rated capacity. Okay, but that's lower than, than the other ones we see here. So it might be slightly under capacity. This is a 50 amp battery for the 1300 and a 50 amp battery for the 1500, but you can see that the 1300 discharged 661 milliamp hours, the 1500 discharged 908 milliamp hours. The, the, the 1500 pack was almost a 60 amp pack. It just barely didn't make it as a 60 amp pack. So the, the 1500 is definitely performing very well. And if we take all of the 50 amp packs and then we say, okay, 908, what beat it? The Thunder Power Adrenaline beat it as a 50 amp pack. The CNHL creamed it as a 50 amp pack, 1,056 milliamp hours. Yeah, so it's uh, it's an okay pack. And it's uh, not the best one on the test though. Not not by my not by my rankings. I do want to say one thing these AC packs do that I really love. Let's see if I get a picture of it is that they ship with a very, very small balance lead. And you're like, wait, is that a good thing? Hold on. They also ship, well, you can't see it here, but they also ship with a balance lead extension. So this is similar to the packs that have disconnectable balance leads. But the problem with those is that you're always, I'm always losing the freaking balance leads. And then I have a battery with no balance lead and I can't use it. So this is pretty cool because the, the balance lead extension is, a fairly easy thing to get if you lose it and if you do lose it you can still kind of plug that into your charger and charge the pack or plug it into your parallel board but a lot of people they just buy these packs and they just leave the 4s extensions plugged into their parallel charge board if you have one or plugged into their charger and then you never have to worry about chopping your balance lead with these packs and i think that's a very clever solution i'm a big i'm a big fan of what they've done 
Finally, guys, we've got the Xylo 1300 and 1500 packs, and these are uh, GetFPV's budget line. So if we look at the capacity, they come in at 102 and 103% of their rated capacity, which you can see that almost nobody else even hits 100% of their rated capacity by my test method, which is not the same as the test method, test method manufacturers use. These are both 50 amp packs like so many of them are they all maybe i need to test with more gradations in the 50 amp range but again even though they're all coming in as 50 amp packs the the number of milliamp hours or the percentage uh c rating that's where we'll find the distinction and we can see that these is coming in for let's take um let's take 1300 packs only let's take a uh, look at the c rating sort largest to sort smallest to largest and we can see that this Xylo pack for the 50 amp 1300 packs, this Xylo pack is near the top in terms of C rating. Oh, that's that's pretty good. I didn't remember it being like extraordinarily good at C rating. I guess we've kind of we've kind of been we kind of hedged it in a little bit because remember the CNHL is a 1300 pack and it does 60 amps, so uh, it's not quite as good. Is that true? Is that the CNHL? No, no, it beat the CNHL. Well, I'll be damned. It beat the CNHL. That's a 50 amp and only did 743. Xylo, uh, I take it back. You're, you've got a fairly decent discharge rate when we actually look at the numbers. Isn't that something? That's why spreadsheets are great. Okay, Xylo, you got me. The burst rating for the Xylo, 70 amps with three discs, just normal. And uh, there you go. That is going to do it for this video. A uh, link to this spreadsheet down in the video description. I will be updating it. I have more packs uh, that are being tested at this very moment. Literally at this moment, some of the packs are on the charger. Um, the packs that I'm testing are the Turnigy Graphene uh, pack. The new Turnigy Graphene pack. For 75, I have to go look. The Rotor Riot practice battery. So it's cheap battery. How good does it perform? And... The oh oh uh, indestructible quads black label. So those are the three that are currently being tested now, and I'm gonna try not to let. I, mean, I was like, I just want to get the website finished. I'm not gonna do any more testing. I'm gonna get the website finished, then I can publish the results in a way that everybody can. Because you guys were having trouble finding the results with my old method of just releasing videos every now and then. And I was working very hard on getting the website done, but it just took, it's taking so freaking long. I don't want to wait anymore. I'm just going to go with something I can do right now. So that's going to do it. Links to all of these are in the spreadsheet. And I sure do appreciate it if you use those links because they are affiliate links. I get a small percentage of the, uh, of the sale when you make any purchase, not just these batteries. Click those affiliate links to, at, before you make any purchase at one of my affiliated vendors. And by the way, who are those? Who are those affiliated vendors? Well, it's these guys right here. You can go right here and you can click any of these links before you make any purchase. And that helps me out, helps me do the kind of work that I'm doing here. Uh, testing batteries and finding out which ones are really worth it and which ones aren't. I gotta tell you guys, I know that the racers use like the super duper expensive $45 batteries, right? But if you look at the results, there are some really decent batteries in the $20, $25 price range. And I think for most pilots, a battery like the CNHL or the race day quads, 1300, 1500, I, I think there, you know, there's not a lot of reason for many pilots to spend more than about 20, 25 bucks on a battery, a, a 13 or 1500 pack. See if you agree. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.